Hey everyone. So I said I was done with the London Real story after our series of films about their digital freedom platform scam. But I'm forced to return to it because they have issued a copyright claim, got many of our investigations taken down, and also a copyright strike against Rebel Wisdom, uh, which is serious business because three copyright strikes and your channel is taken down. But the reason I'm making this film is not just to capitalize on crying censorship, it's because it really highlights all of the problems that I was pointing to in the first series of films. Which if you're not familiar with the story, I also wrote an article on Medium that I'm linking to in the show notes if you want to familiarize yourself. But effectively, it was a story that highlighted all of the problems with free speech and censorship, uh, the censorship decisions of the big tech platforms, but also how censorship itself could be weaponized by bad actors. You know, people who might do something like, I don't know, raise a million dollars off your followers uh, under false pretenses and then they'd all turn on you. But the main issue is that in that original film, I talked about how we, the kind of wider YouTube community, people making content, had to become self-policing. Otherwise, the big tech platforms would come and do it and they would do it really badly. So the fact that this copyright system can be weaponized, and I'm going to explain how it's been weaponized, is a really serious, serious problem. So I got this notification this morning, a copyright claim, copyright strike, and video taken down. Click on it, and sure enough, it's from London Real TV. And the amazing thing is that it's this film that they've done a copyright claim on. Uh, we did it over a, hundred, over a million, love is the answer, we must now prepare for war. And it's this particular part of the film where Brian Rose talks about head faking his audience. So I gotta do a little head fake every now and then. So this is a quick update the next day uh, because a few more copyright claims have come in. So the latest is the London Real investigation update has been removed, copyright claim. The original investigation has been blocked uh, copyright claim, and so has the update with CoffeeZilla and Rebel Wisdom. But for about 24 hours, the original investigation was up with a copyright claim, but all of the ad revenue was going to London Real. Uh, so, Brian, uh, I have donated. The really fucked up thing about this is that copyright law is designed so that this sort of thing doesn't happen. It always includes a defense of fair dealing. I know this from working as a producer at Channel 4 News for many years, and I was very, very careful about the way I use this material because I know the rules. So there's a few key things that you need to do to make sure you have a fair dealing defense. One, you have to label the material clearly so you're not trying to pass it off as your own, which I did with every single clip that I use. I was very careful about that. Two, you have to use the minimum amount to make your point. You can't just use it as wallpaper or B-roll but you can use it just to illustrate the point that you're trying to make or the criticism that you're trying to make, which I also did. I also tried contacting Brian Rose on multiple occasions to get his response, although that's more of a defamation defense rather than a copyright defense. The really fucked up thing about this whole situation is that the reason for using this particular clip was because I was making the point in multiple films that Brian Rose wasn't being honest with his audience. And in this clip, he admitted it. He admitted that he'd been head faking or being untruthful with his audience. This was the evidence that proved the point that was being made. And then the person who makes that claim can use copyright law to have it taken down. Now, the process from here, as I understand it, is I need to object to the copyright claim and then it goes back to Brian Rose and London Real, who then have 30 days to decide whether it's a breach of copyright or not. And only after that process, some way down the line, does YouTube get involved. The whole point of fair dealing is that you can do news commentary of ongoing events and it can't be used to evade scrutiny, which is basically what's happening here. And of course, the massive irony is that Brian Rose's digital freedom platform was supposed to be all about free speech in the first place. So it's kind of ironic that he's deleting a load of comments from his site and issuing copyright notices against people who are criticizing him. So I just want to play a short clip from the first investigation that I put out, just explaining what I think the bigger issue is. So the big picture framing, I would say, is that we're in this kind of interregnum period between two worlds. We've 
like the, the, the old gatekeepers are losing their power increasingly fast. But what we don't have is you can imagine there might be some kind of decentralized networked way of coming to truth, um, d democratic way of coming to truth that could emerge on the other side. We're not there yet. I think it's really important that we use our free speech to call out people who we think are being irresponsible, because right now, if we don't do this, if we don't use our free speech and somehow create some kind of accountability, then what's going to happen is that the big tech platforms are going to take those decisions for us, that we're going to, if we don't use free speech with responsibility, we're going to lose it. In the first film, I called the whole situation a clusterfuck. This is another level of clusterfuckery. So my whole point was that YouTube is making editorial decisions without the skill set to do it. So what's the point and how will this system become self-policing if YouTube's regulations mean that bad actors can weaponize it? So as I said before, I didn't really want to return to the London Real dumpster fire. And there were some signs that actually the scrutiny was working. Not just Rebel Wisdom, but also CoffeeZilla was putting out a lot of films criticizing Brian Rose and looking at the things that didn't quite add up. And if you look at the stats from London Real, it seems to have had an effect. And the audience has turned in quite an amazing way. If you check some of the films, for example, uh, this one, 425 down votes, 104 up votes, and the comments really do speak for themselves. It may be worth reading off a few because they're beautiful. I, like, I can't imagine a bigger train wreck with your audience because basically he was getting all these questions, all this pressure, and it's like one day he just snapped. Like the way he went after his audience was insane. Uh, winners focus on winning. See above. Scammers. And this guy says scammers focus on scamming. And London Real goes like you. Let me guess. You didn't donate. Here's another one. Number one. Ask for money. London Real. Money gets shit done, fool. Let me guess. You're broke. So let, let's unpack that. He's cursing at his audience, calling them fools that that may have donated may have donated, we don't know in this case. So at the same time as I'm putting this up, I'm also going to put back up the interview that I did with CoffeeZilla while taking out the copywriter material that means it won't get flagged again. But this whole situation really just highlights how fragile the situation is for us content providers on YouTube. So if you're really enjoying our content, uh, I'd bookmark a few other places that you can find Rebel Wisdom material. So check out our podcast channel, Le details are in the show notes. Uh, we're going to turn our website into much more of a content platform as well in the next few weeks or so. Uh, also, go to the website and make sure you're on our mailing list as well, and we'll update you about new films in that way as well. Rebel Wisdom was set up to make sense of the world at a deeper level than the mainstream media. It was built for these times of crisis and change, which is why we want to do what we can to meet the challenge of the times. More films, and also for our Rebel Wisdom members, weekly sense-making calls with our amazing interviewees. And also, we're introducing the Wisdom Gym, a place to practice some of the skills that we've talked about on the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.